In yesterday's video, fun fact, I actually had another part in that video that I cut out because it was going to be way too long. It was 18 minutes and the second half of the video, I was talking about lines that I wanted Mike Sullivan to use. You guys aren't going to sit there and watch me talk for 18 minutes. So I had to cut that part out of the video and I'm like, yo, this is brilliant. Zach Asnerese is called up. Let me, first of all, those lines are outdated because as I made that video, Zach Asnerese was called up and also uh, Garrett Wilson and uh, Derek Grant has been sold, uh, sent down. So it was already outdated, my, my little lineup that I wanted to show with you guys. Now, I know Sullivan isn't going through my YouTube videos <laughs> trying to find uh, uh, potential lineups or whatever, but uh, I'm just saying this is more for discussion for me and you and you guys so we can talk. I'm gonna give you guys my thoughts and then I want you guys to give me your own lineups or you can just comment on mine. All right, so I have Dominic Simon, Crosby, and uh, Patrick Hornquist on line number one. I may get some people disagreeing with this, but Crosby and Simon, you know, they're finding chemistry. They're playing well together. I'm loving Simon's game. I think he can play on that top line with Crosby and Patrick Hornquist on the right side. Because also I think Hornquist plays the best when he's with Crosby. So I think putting him in the bottom six, I mean, he's still a good player, but he's the most useful when he's with Crosby. So I think Simon, Crosby, and uh, Hornquist is the best option here because that also allows us to spread out the depth. And now let's get into that line number two. I have Carl Hagelin, Evgeny Malkin, and here's the big one, Daniel Sprong. Now, putting this out here, I already know that it's unrealistic because I know Mike Sullivan isn't putting Sprong on the second line, but you know, this is my little projection. Hear me out. You know, you have Carl Hagelin, Evgeny Malkin, who've been playing together with Phil Kessel. This time you replace Kessel, put him on the third line, which I'll get to in a second. And you have uh, Sprong, who I think can give you the same production, maybe not the same exact like Phil Kessel, but not it's not going to be noticeably like different. It's going to be the almost the same. So number one, you spread out the depth, like I said. Number two, you give Sprong confidence, a chance. You give him uh, the best chance playing with Malkin and Hagelin on the, in a top six role. I think if you can find Sprong and Malkin to find some sort of chemistry, now that the lineup is looking scary because now we go into the third line where I have, and this is my favorite line, Jake Gensel, Derek Broussard, and Phil Kessel. That is the most complete line on this team by far. And I think as a third line can definitely destroy teams. That's a first line on most teams. That's crazy. And we're going to have it as our third line. You know, that's why I put Simo. I was going to put Gensel with Crosby, but I think Gensel just having like overpower that third line. You have Kessel who has chemistry with Broussard. Last year, they were playing well together at the end. And uh, Kessel is really good at carrying his own line. It's kind of like a way, way better version of the HBK line. Gensel being a way better version of Hagelin. Uh, Broussard being a way better version of, uh, of Bonino. And Kessel, you know, being the same old Kessel. So I know many may disagree with what I'm doing here so far. But, like, think of this, right? You have Crosby. Teams are focusing on Crosby number one. So you put your top pair on Crosby's line, right? Then you have the second line, which is Malkin. So you put your second pair on Malkin's line, obviously. Then Brassard, Kessel are going to be playing against other teams' third pairs. They're going to absolutely torch them up. And then you have, all right, let's say teams start realizing this. So they put their first pair on, let's say, the Kessel line. And then they're going to put their second pair on one of Malkin and Crosby's lines. That means one of Crosby and Malkin is going to play against another team's third pair. And then that line is going to torch them. And then until other teams realize, and it's just going to be an ongoing cycle of, you know, no team has three great pairs. You know, you have... Some teams have two great pairs, like Nashville, San Jose. But no team has three all-star pairs to handle these three all-star lines. So that's why I think you need to spread the depth. You know, I, For this, I think it's a win-win, right? You have your first line, which is going to produce Crosby. Whoever you pull Crosby is going to produce. Simon is playing well with Crosby. Hornfist, we've seen it play well before. Sprong, you may find something that you never knew you had in Sprong if you put him with Malkin for more than just a shift for actually maybe five games. And then you allow, like, that third line is getting me excited. Just Gensel, Broussard, and Kessel. Just imagine that, right? On Against third teams, other teams' third lines, and other teams' third pairs. That's going to absolutely destroy teams. And that is what can help the Penguins just get those extra goals. Get Because the, they're, they're, they're lacking depth scoring right now, the Penguins. So I think um, doing this helps the depth tremendously. And now we have the fourth line where I have Zach Aston Reese, uh, Riley Shan, and Brian Rust. I think that line of... Uh, Czar, Shan, and Rust is the best fourth line in the league. All those guys aren't fourth liners, but putting them there, you can actually roll your four lines. Trust your four lines. You can put your fourth line on for 10 minutes a game. You know, a guy like Shan and Rust are going to kill penalties, so they're going to get that extra ice time. And Zach Asteris benefits a lot to that fourth line. And I know there's going to be people who don't like Rust on the fourth line. At the end of the day, who would you rather have on the fourth line, Rust or Sprong? I think Rust fits the fourth line the best, and Sprong fits the top six the best. Uh, Rust, Rust is still going to play 13 to 15 minutes a night. He's going to be killing penalties. And doing this allows 
Soda to roll all the four lines. So I think that fourth line can be also really good. This, these lineups that I'm saying right now gives the Penguins four extremely really good lines like the, the depth is getting spread all over the place so we can get some more depth scoring so i was actually just editing this video and i realized i didn't mention anything about matt cullen what i meant to say i just never said it was matt cullen is going to be a healthy scratch the reason why is when we signed him i never expected him to be in the lineup you know as a regular i thought he was going to be a 13th forward and get in the lineup every time there was an injury and now that we're playing him 14 minutes a night on the fourth line i think it's just not worth it he's going to burn out by the time 2019 hits you know like we need him healthy like he's a 42 year old he's not what he used to be two years ago when we won the cup we can't depend on him like that like we used to i think a guy like shan can do a better job as the center and zach aston reese could be better on that fourth line you know what i mean so i think colin could be a healthy scratch and then come in the lineup every time the either the penguins are losing a couple games you could just shake it up by putting colin in the, in the lineup or you uh every time there's an injury you could put him in you know that's my thoughts and let's go back to the video all right guys give me your thoughts because also what you can do is maybe put zach aston reese on the second line and replace him with Haglin. because i do think uh zach aston reese is going to be Haglin's replacement next year if he doesn't resign uh but maybe you can start that from now put czar on the malkins line but i don't think you could put sprong there anymore maybe you put kessel and then you put sprong on the third line there's plenty of options now what i hope doesn't happen is zach aston reese replaces a guy like sprong or simo in the lineup that just you're making no progress there, you know? It's like, how much better is Zach Aston Reese than Sprong, you know what I mean? If you put him on the fourth line, you're gonna get the same production. It just, you take out Cullen, put Shan in the middle, put Zar, you know, ease him in, putting him on the fourth line, and then you can, from there, put him with Malkin, with Crosby, you can, like, like I said, there's so many options. You, you could go with so many different line combinations that will work. I would actually love your guys' thoughts. Maybe give me your own line combinations in the, in the comments or comment on that or do both comment on mine and at the same time, give your own. It's up to you guys, really. I'm going to wrap it up. Thank you guys so much for watching. You know, you guys got back-to-back -back videos. Let me know if you enjoyed. Uh, give me your thoughts. I would love to see what you have to say about the, my, my lineups. Uh, you know, so many things, to, you know, so many options. But yeah, Penguins play tonight. The uh, Alex Ovechkin and the Washington Capitals. Uh, I'm excited to see for tonight. I'm, I'm excited, right? I, I want to see what Mike Sullivan does, how Zach Aston Reese plays, if he even does play, uh, how Matt Murray plays. Everything. I just everyone needs to play better, and I hope we can get the win. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.